In this video, I'll show how to generate natural sounding speech locally on the framework desktop powered by AMD Strix Halo, including cloning a voice from a short sample and creating multi speaker conversations. This entire intro you are hearing right now was generated by Vibe Voice using a sample of my voice. I have been having a lot of fun with local Gen AI on the framework desktop. So far, we've looked at how to run LLMs and image and video generation on Strix Halo. So the natural step is speech and Vibe Voice is just what we need for that. It was released by Microsoft in August, and it is an open-weight, state-of-the-art model for long-form multi-speaker conversations. I'll show you how to run it locally on Strix Halo using a Fedora toolbox. Walk through the Gradio UI, show you how to form a text for multiple voices, and generate a clip with your own cloned voice. I should say that Microsoft retracted the weights for the large model after misuse reports. Community mirrors exist and will use a mirror for this demo. Of course, use this model responsibly. Clone only voices that you have rights to get explicit permission, follow the law, and disclose AI-generated audio where appropriate. This is what you need to do if you just want to get Vibe Voice up and running on Strix Halo. First, use this command from the repository linked in the description to create the Strix Halo Voice toolbox. Ensure that you expose the GPU device and groups then enter it with this other command. Download the weights from the community mirror into your home directory so that they persist outside of the toolbox. Start the Gradio web UI with the Vive Voice command, passing the location of your downloaded weights. Once up, Open the web UI at localhost 8000, and if you're running remotely via an SSH session, don't forget to forward the port. I should also say that Toolbox is not the same on all distributions. I use Fedora, and that has a strong implementation of Toolbox. But if you use other distributions, they might ship with a somewhat different version that might not allow you, for example, to expose the GPU. And of course, in that case, you won't be able to run these models. On Ubuntu, for example, our user reported that in order for the toolbox to see the GPU, you need to add UDEV rules for KFD and DRM and reload or reboot the system. Look at the description in the repository readme for more information. Once you open the web UI in the browser, you'll see a simple Gradio page. Gradio is a framework for quickly building lightweight web UIs for machine learning applications with a lot of pre-built components like text boxes, sliders, and buttons. And here, this is the official Gradio demo provided by Microsoft with the Vibe Voice repository. Now, if you use a dark theme in your operating system, I recommend moving to a light one temporarily, otherwise controls will not show well. So, to generate our first audio, we set the speakers to one and pick a default voice. Paste a short script here, click generate, and in a minute you'll have the uh, generated audio clip. You can play with multiple generations and also adjust the CFG setting. CFG stands for classifier-free guidance, a parameter that controls how strongly the model follows the guidance input. In the Gradio demo, this is set to 1.3 by default. 
Lower values make the model more flexible but risk drifting away from your input and higher values force it to stick more closely to the input that you gave in terms of voice. You'll need to experiment. For my voice, which has a non-standard accent in English, I had to set CFG quite high, around 1.8, to get something uh, close to my actual voice. For most native speakers with common accents, values around 1.2 and 1.3 usually work well. Vibe Voice also supports up to four speakers in one track. Simply prepare your script with speaker markers, just like this. Set uh, speakers to two, three or four in the UI and assign a voice to each of the speakers and then hit generate. Now, let's take it a step further and try cloning your own voice. Now, for this, you need to record a 30 to 60 second sample of your voice, drop it into the voices folder under your home directory, and then restart the Gradio demo. Then generate a clip by selecting your voice. And that's it. It's as simple as that. The only thing you might need to play with is the CFG guidance. As I said, to get decent results with my weird accent, I need to set very high CFG values. In terms of stability, I had to do quite a lot of tinkering and exploration, as this always ended up in a crash with a SAG fault on my system. It turns out that the root cause was that some of the audio pre-processing libraries pulled in extra dependencies that did not play well with ROCKM. Vibe Voice relies on the browser for audio feature extraction and Librosa, in turn, tries to use Numba to make these operations faster. Numba is a just-in-time compiler for Python, and it depends on LLVM Lite, which is a lightweight wrapper around LLVM. LLVM itself is a general compiler framework, and Rockham also uses LLVM internally to compile GPU kernels. That means Rockham ships its own version of LLVM, which is different from the one bundled with LLVM Lite, and the two collided. That chain ended up binding to Rockham's libllvm library, which caused the crash. The fix in this toolbox was simply to remove the actual Namba and LLVM Lite libraries and replace them with a very simple fake module. That fake module just pretends functions like GIT exist, but does nothing when called. GIT here stands for just-in-time compilation, and normally Namba would use it to speed up Python code by compiling parts of it to machine code on the fly. But again, in our case, we disable it entirely to avoid conflicts. In plain terms, this means disabling the acceleration layer and forcing Librosa to fall back to slower, pure Python libraries. This makes audio pre-processing a bit slower, but inference is stable. Typically, at this point in my videos, I'd try to give you an idea of how the model works under the hood, like I did for diffusion models and LLMs. But right now, I don't have much time to make videos as I've been honestly quite busy with work and traveling around for different conferences. So instead, I decided to send the Vice Void paper to Quen3 running on my framework desktop and I asked it to generate a podcast episode explaining how the model works. I then gave this script to Vibe Voice to generate the full episode. I'll play it in a second at the end of this video. Before I do that, if you like this content and want me to continue this series on Strix Halo and keep creating more optimized toolboxes, please drop a comment below, like the video and subscribe. It really does make a difference for a small channel like mine. Hello everyone and welcome to the Vibe Voice podcast. 
I'm your host, Alex, and today we're diving into the technical details behind Microsoft Research's new speech synthesis model, Vibe Voice. We're going to walk through how it works from input to output, focusing on the architecture and the key components that make long-form, multi-speaker speech possible. With me is Thomas, who's been working in machine learning for years. Thanks for being here, Thomas. Great to be here, Alex. This is a really interesting system, especially because it's designed to generate up to 90 minutes of continuous speech with multiple speakers, which is no small feat. Right, so let's start at the beginning. What exactly goes into this model? We know there are voice prompts and a script, but how is the script actually processed? The script is plain text, what each speaker should say, but it's structured with speaker labels. For example, you might have speaker one, colon, welcome to the show, followed by speaker two, colon, thanks for having me. That text is processed using a standard text tokenizer, which converts the words into discrete tokens, just like in any large language model. So the text gets embedded and fed into the LLM like normal? Yes, but it's not alone. The model also takes voice prompts, short audio clips that define how each speaker should sound. These are passed through two specialized encoders. One is an acoustic tokenizer based on a variational autoencoder, which captures the voice quality, tone, and prosody. The other is a semantic tokenizer, which extracts linguistic content from the speech, helping the model understand the speaker's style of expression. So both the script and the voice prompts are turned into representations the model can work with. Exactly. The text tokens from the script are combined with the encoded voice features from both tokenizers, and all of this is tagged with speaker identifiers. So it's not separate streams. The text and voice information are fused into one sequence the LLM can process? That's right. The LLM, such as Quen245, takes this combined sequence and processes it from start to finish, producing a sequence of hidden states. Each hidden state reflects the context at that position, what's being said, who's saying it, and how it should sound. And then how does that turn into actual speech? After the LLM, a diffusion head takes each hidden state and uses it to generate a continuous latent vector that represents a small segment of speech. It does this using a diffusion process, starting from random noise, it gradually refines the signal step by step, guided by the LLM's context. So the diffusion head predicts audio latents token by token, conditioned on the LLM's output? Yes, each latent vector corresponds to a short chunk of speech in a compressed form. Once generated, these vectors are passed to the decoder of the acoustic tokenizer, the same variational autoencoder used earlier, to reconstruct the final waveform. So the audio is built from these compact representations, second by second, matching the script and the intended voices. Exactly. The LLM handles the high-level structure, the dialogue flow, timing, and speaker turns, while the diffusion head and VAE handle the detailed, high-fidelity generation of speech. That makes sense. So the script isn't just converted word by word, it's part of a broader context that guides a generative process focused on continuous audio synthesis. Yes, the whole system is designed to scale to long conversations by combining efficient compression, language model-based context understanding, and diffusion-based audio generation, all in a unified framework. Thanks, Thomas. That gives a clear picture of how the text and voice inputs come together to produce natural, multi-speaker speech. Exactly. It's a powerful architecture that keeps things modular but tightly integrated from input to output. 